first thing you're going to need to do is find a pattern. You can use any pattern that has a flared skirt. The one I picked has two panels in the front and two panels in the back. But what you want is something like a circle skirt where there's not a lot of bulk up at the waistband. My piece, my pattern has a uh, skirt back, a skirt front, pockets, and a waistband, and that is all. You cut two of each, uh, front and back. I have this massive roll of uh, fabric that's sewed onto batting that I had gotten at a super deal. So that's what I'm using, but you don't need this. You can use a piece of fleece, you can use an old thin blanket. Um, you're just going to need something for a liner, and I'm using this red side for the liner. You can use a sheet. Here I'm placing one of my pattern pieces, and I'm going to be needing to cut two of each, so I'm just trying to center it on there. But you can get an idea of how full this skirt is. It's almost a circle skirt. need quite a lot of fabric for this, at least four times the finished skirt length. So if you're going to want your skirt to be 30 inches long, you're going to want to get at least 120 inch length of fabric. But what I'm doing, I'm using this uh, pretty busy calico for my uh, pretty side, and I am using up some scraps. It's not a continuous piece. And so as I'm cutting, you'll see there's one point where I actually have to piece a couple of them together to make enough to get the, the pattern piece cut out. But it's okay because it's a quilted skirt and it's piecing and it blends. Besides, what I like about this skirt is that the calico is very busy. So the seam where I'm gonna sew it together is invisible. You can see I'm just placing another piece down here, trying to use my fabric as judiciously as possible, trimming the edges. I, I chose this fabric because you'll see later the way that I'm going to be quilting it is a very freeform design, and I'm doing this on purpose for this skirt because if you're gonna be following along and you're not used to quilting, it can get a little bit messy. And if you have a very busy fabric, all of that ends up pretty much being camouflaged so you don't even see it. So I would suggest a pretty busy fabric. This is the piece that I end up needing a little extra. So piecing is fine. What is it, piecing is period? Use what you have. I'm just going to be matching up and coming up with a place where the two edges are going to meet. And uh, off camera, I'll go ahead and sew them together. And you'll see, voila, they're sewed together and you can't even see it because it's very busy. So what I'm going to do now is go through all my pieces and pin the pretty layer over the batting to the liner on the bottom. And uh, I'm going to do this on all of them because we need to make sure that everything matches up correctly. It's important to keep it secure. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer all my markings because these four skirt pieces look very similar. So I write down um, on the lining side with a marker that disappears when you get it wet. So I mark down where my pockets are going to go, where the center front and center back is, and uh, the name of the piece. Once I have all that, I have to cut out my pockets. So I'm just using some of my other little scraps to try to find a place for all of my four pocket pieces, two for each side. And the last thing I'm cutting out is my waistband. 
this is a fusible waistband interfacing that I buy in bulk. And what I'm going to do is take my waist measurement and add about three inches. It's not an exact science, but about three inches and cut the interfacing at that point. That's going to give me plenty for an overlap. So you can see I can iron the uh, piece. I had to piece the waistband fabric together. But once I have that, I can iron the interfacing onto it. Lots of steam. Take it nice and slow, just to make sure you get a really good adherence. And then I flip it over and I iron the pretty side, because sometimes with the fusible it gets a little bit bumpy. So if you can iron the pretty side and smooth it all out. I'm going to cut about a half inch on the outside edges. And just, I'm ironing at the fold lines right now, just so I can kind of train the fabric to be folding that direction. So when it comes time to put the waistband on, it's a lot easier. Just We're going to need to get started basting all of the fabric pieces together. Basting, basting. And now I'm going to get started using my faff machine to do some machine quilting. It's an abstract pattern, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. There's no set way. You just kind of make loops and you go one direction until you feel like turning. It's totally up to you how wide you want the loops, how pointy you want the loops. And you can see the way that I do it. Um, they're not all exactly similar and that's okay because like I said, the other side is very busy. The bobbin thread I'm using is very dark. And so it's going to blend in on that side. You don't need a fancy sewing machine to be able to do this. In fact, I'm gonna show you on the most unfancy machine that it's, it's very possible. Let me see. I'm just going to be guiding the fabric with my hands. And you can see I don't really press down with both hands. Usually one, maybe both hands, actually gets a little grip on the fabric. And that way it's easier for me to move it around. When you put both hands like it looks like I'm doing here, and you're pressing down hard to try to keep it really, really tight, you end up working against yourself. And it's a lot harder. So I suggest just take it easy. A light touch makes it so much better. So you can see you don't need a high-tech specialized machine for what they call free motion quilting. All you need is a foot. This machine is a low shank, so I have a low shank foot. This machine does not even drop its feed dogs all the way. There's no way. What is, what are we here? We are a 1910 model 66 red eye. But even with the feed dogs not dropped, you can still quilt. What I do is I adjust the stitch length down to zero. So they're not moving forward and backward, they're just going up and down. On the top of your machine, there's going to be a knob or an adjustment of some kind. Just about every machine. You're going to want to bring this, unscrew it a lot, because that lowers the pressure on your pressure foot so you have more freedom to move. And then it's just a matter of practice. On treadles, this is uh, one that I've been using for a long time and my daughter learned to sew on it. You always have to make sure the wheel turns towards you. If you turn it the other way, the thread's going to break every single time. But honestly, treadle quilting is so therapeutic. A little bit slower, but you can actually control the threads really well because your whole body is working together. So 
So now I'm getting started on one of the skirt pieces. I'm actually going to quilt one of the skirt pieces entirely on the treadle machine. And when I'm done, it's going to look exactly like the high-powered quilting machine. And it's very enjoyable to use. You can see the quilting foot that I'm using there, how it moves up and down just a little bit. And basically, when the foot is up for that fraction of a second, that's when the fabric moves. And so you're just putting enough pressure so that when the foot lifts up, you can move the fabric. I want to show I'm actually wearing a quilted skirt right now. This one I made out of a calico, it's a little dirty. Um, and instead of just a random design, I used, uh, it's very hard to see, I used a sheet actually to line it. And I used a template to trace a little design on. So I had like a swirliness at the border and little emblem type florets that I quilted in all around here. Um, and then at the bottom, I had some red velvet ribbon and I just folded that over the edge. And this has been my workhorse and it's so comfy. I wear it for chores, I wear it out. I wore it out to the hair cutting place the other day. And it's comfy and it's warm and you get so many compliments on it. Now, this one has a little waistband here and it zips up the back and it's just comfortable so I wanted to show you that okay so I am working my back pieces here first thing I'm going to do is do the center back seam and place in my zipper I want to show you how I iron my seam allowances if you are using a polyester filling and you push down real hard, it's going to melt. I just very lightly, I'm not even barely touching the fabric. I'm hovering and steaming it. And then I come back with my piece of wood. I think technically it's called a clapper, but this is just a piece of wood we cut off, uh, or my husband cut off and sanded down for me. And that presses it in without actually melting the fiber. Because if you do, um, do a hardcore steam press everything you're gonna make interfacing out of your batting it's gonna melt and become one big stiff solid sheet instead of a light fluffy interfacing so there you go that's how I do it I ended up putting an exposed black metal zipper in it because nothing says I'm cottage core country but edgy like quilted calico in a black exposed metal zipper why not so this is my front this is the center front is sewed together and I have my pockets attached and my back looks pretty much like this I'm going to put them together sew around do my little tag up and tag down for the pockets and then I'll be ready to put on my waistband. I'm not really focusing on construction of this point really intensely because everyone's going to be using their own pattern and the details on construction will be in that pattern. This is just in general how I am putting this particular skirt together from this point. So you can see it's very very flared um, with just a circular waistband and that's what we want. So I have attached the waistband and I am whip stitching the back side closed and um, I think that that makes it the most secure and then after this we're going to put on buttons. Does everyone have a bag of random buttons or a jar of random buttons like this. I'm just trying to find one that I think will work. So here's my button 
And what I'm going to do is put the longer edge on the bottom. That's where I'm going to sew the button on. The top's going to have my buttonhole. Okay, back here at my treadle machine, I've taken the um, foot for quilting off, and we're going to be putting this on. This is my see this necky rotary buttonhole attachment. I've seen these listed on eBay and stuff with different brand names, but they're all very similar. Fabulous little things. You pick a cog that's the size of the button that you're going to use. It comes with several in several different shapes. Open the back and it pops in. Okay, so you're going to put it back in. That one back. Pop it closed. Then this hooks onto your machine. This part here that goes up and down is going to go onto this little screw here. And that's going to keep the feed dogs from influencing any, any way our uh, business. So I'm going to do that. go through all this extra effort with these machines it's because I'll enjoy them. I really love them. I have a cat here bothering me. Her name's Midna. And honestly, sewing it's a passion and it's a hobby and as soon as you finish one thing, at least with me, I'm going to want to start on another. So I might as well take my time. So you can see this little lever is on here. So when the foot goes up and down, it moves that lever up and down. I'm going to use my little chisel and a leather backing to cut the buttonhole open and then just pull any random threads out just to make sure I have a clean buttonhole that nothing will get caught later and then that's about it. How exciting because it's time that I can go ahead and try it on. I did end up putting another ribbon border on the bottom of this that I did not show for some reason. I just didn't think about it. Um, but that's how I hem this, similar to my red one, with a uh, blue ribbon around the base. For the wheezing in the background, it's my little dog asleep on my lap. She's snoring. She's old, but we love her.
How do you like it? A big quilted skirt. Honestly, it's a very comfortable thing. And the more you wear it, and the more you wash it, the softer and the more like a favorite quilt it will become. It's, uh, it's a chance to try new skills, to practice free motion quilting without a lot of stress. It's a chance to uh, get your inner seven brides for seven brothers out. If you ever saw that musical, oh my gosh, fabulous musical. There's some really pretty quilted skirts that these girls were wearing, especially the main character. And that's what got me started on this whole, wouldn't it be practical to wear a quilted skirt? I mean, I watch the guys go out and they wear insulated pants, you know, with a layer of the thermal batting or uh, thinsulate or whatever it is that's in there. And it really helps them stay warm. Well, I don't really like wearing pants that much. I will, but I don't like it so much. I'm more comfortable in skirts. And between the insulation of the skirt and then the body heat that is trapped underneath the skirt it actually stays really warm so give it a try i think you'd like it and you can use whatever you have around the house if you want to use for a lining use an old sheet i've done that it works great if you want to use some uh, fleece poly fleece um, you know that, that fleece fabric that everyone uses for crafting and everything? You got a big ugly piece of that that you don't know what to do with? That can be your thermal layer, okay? As long as it's not so thick that you have trouble feeding it underneath the uh, quilting foot, it'll work great. And if you just look online, if you don't have a quilting foot, I bought mine on eBay look for the uh, your machine, the shank height, it'll be, either be a high shank, a low shank, a slanted shank, put that in. You'll find one for less than $10. Sometimes you have to try different styles to figure out which one works best, but it's, it's not the end of the world. If you get the wrong one, get a different one. And it is so therapeutic and peaceful. I think you'll really like it. So I hope you like this video. I enjoy making these videos and I plan on continuing up the things that I enjoy making and are very useful around here and some things I make that just are not useful but I just enjoy them. I'm going to be putting that out there so it's nice to meet you and I hope we can become friends. Thanks! See you next time. Bye!